there, I'm Ann Teagarden with the Unveiled Podcast, and this is episode 82, Stepping Out of the Dark into a New Season. So for the past two episodes, I've been sharing about seasons, and I'm feeling like maybe there are some of you that are stuck in a dark season. I've been there before. It seems like it will never end, and there's no hope for change. Your heart is heavy and you seem to just stay in survival mode most of the time. No matter what the cause of that season is, it's real and you feel like you're sinking. I get it. First, I want you to know that God is with you in your season. He sees you, he sees your pain and your despair, and he wants you to know how much he loves you. He is by your side, protecting you, holding you and guiding you if you will look to him and allow him to do those things. I believe that Isaiah chapter 43 offers great help and hope for those in dark times. In this chapter, God is speaking to Israel through the prophet Isaiah, and verses one and two have brought me great comfort during times of testing and refining or deconstruction as I talked about in episode 81. So I want you to listen to this beautiful promise from God with your heart. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. I love those promises. While this was given to Israel, we are also God's people, adopted into his family if we've given our lives to him. So this promise is for you personally. He says, do not fear. And that is the first point in moving through and out of a dark season. Do not fear. He gives us reasons not to fear because he has redeemed us. He has called us by name. We are his. Because he is with us in the flood and fire, and he will not let us be swept away or burned. I know I've had times when I've thought my emotions might sweep me away downstream or drown me, but they didn't. God brought me through it, and he will bring you through it too. He is faithful to keep his promises. Sometimes I know we don't feel God near, but he is. So proclaim it because it's truth and look for him. Most of all, take time to be still and seek him. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So remember that second part. Seek him with all your heart. No matter how swamped you are, you will only find the peace and comfort and direction that you're longing for by taking time alone with Jesus and seeking him with all your heart. Your circumstances may not change right away, but your heart and your mind will. When we begin to feel his presence, we are encouraged. When we begin to hear him speaking to our hearts, we find a solid rock on which to stand. There are many things that can keep us stuck in a dark time. Self-pity, hopelessness, guilt and shame, self-centeredness, pride, fear, control. I'm sure there are others. Only God can help us see what it is that is holding us back and then renew our minds. Your Heavenly Father created you and he is calling you not only out of your dark place, but up to a higher place. He calls us out and up. Through this process of seeking him and following him out of our stuck place, he's going to call us up into a new understanding of him and our purpose. So think about the Israelites. God not only rescued them from slavery in Egypt, but he called them into the promised land. The only reason they spent 40 years in the wilderness was because they were too afraid to go in and take the promised land. Is that where you are? It could be. Sometimes it feels easier to stay stuck in the known than to move out into the unknown. And sometimes there really is a wilderness between where we are and the promised land, or in our terms, the new season that God has for us. 
but he will guide you through the wilderness. We don't have to wander around in it for 40 years like the Israelites. They could have made it from the Red Sea to the promised land in only 11 days if they had totally trusted God. Instead, they longed for the former bondage of Egypt. In Exodus 16, 3, it records, The Israelites said, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve the entire assembly to death. They were actually longing to go back to slavery. So step one, do not fear. Step two, seek him. And step three, forget the past. Do not look back. In Isaiah 43, in verses 16 and 17, he reminds the Israelites that God not only led them through the Red Sea, but he snuffed out the Egyptian army. There was no going back to Egypt. And in verses 18 and 19, he gives them and us this advice. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God says step three very plainly there. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Sometimes we hash and rehash old conversations, hurts, wrongs, our own mistakes, just over and over again, causing the wound to stay open and never heal. Wounds must close to heal. This is true of physical and emotional wounds. So close that chapter and allow the healing to begin. You were not meant to suffer endlessly. Do not punish yourself and others by staying in a place of hurt long term. God is doing a new thing. Yes, in your life, he is doing a new thing. He is making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland, just like he did for the Israelites. He really is, I promise, because God promised it, because Jesus set us free from our past through his death on the cross. Verse 19, again, it says, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? My guess is that you do not perceive it if you are feeling stuck, and that can happen. Our family lives in the woods, and often there is a turtle crossing the road, and I don't want him to get smashed, so I get out of my car to relocate him to the other side. As soon as I get near the turtle, he ducks inside his shell. He doesn't see anything as I pick him up and move him to the other side. He has no idea what is going on. He is just terrified, even though I am trying to save his life. Sometimes we are so hurt that like a turtle, we go into our shell for protection. We stay there where it feels safe. But that turtle in the middle of the road, inside of his shell, is not safe. The next car that came along may have killed him. Only by allowing me to relocate him is he truly safe. Our self-protective walls that we put up don't actually keep us safe. What they do is hinder God coming in and working in our hearts to give us truth and supernatural protection, which is way better than our own self-protection. The final step then is look forward and step into your new, new season. See the new thing that God is doing. He is calling you out and up. Take that first step. For us, the season of infertility was really hard and dark. After almost three years, we chose to close that chapter and put it behind us. We sought God and we stepped into a new season of adoption. God called us out and up into the beauty of adoption. And he showed us his plan by speaking to us about our children before they were born. So we learned a new aspect of God through it and our faith grew. And when we brought them home from the hospital, there was great joy. But we had to set aside our fears of adoption and take those first steps ourselves. God did the rest. Moving from being stuck in a dark season into a new season begins with choosing not to fear and seeking God. Then forget the past. Do not look back, but look forward. 
and step out and up into your new season, your promised land, which is God's best plan for you. Step one, do not fear. Step two, seek God. Step three, forget the past. Step four, step out and in up into your new season. Be courageous, my friend. I'll leave you with Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Please let me know if you found this helpful. I would love to hear from you. You can leave a comment or email me at Anne, A-N-N-E, at S-Y-N-E-R-G-I-A-M-M dot com, Synergia-M-M dot com. Have a great day and go enjoy in peace.